Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I want to cover the final part of the unlockable profile pictures tutorial and in this part I want to cover how you can make profile pictures that are not unlockable by a user level or a user achievement but simply by being a moderator or being staff. So what I want to cover in this video is how could you approach that and how could you make sure that only your staff in your game would essentially have access to certain things. So in this scenario it's of course profile pictures but you could also apply this to items in your game or anything. It's still the same general concept so if you want your moderators or staff only to have certain perks or admins for example then this is uh, how you could approach something like that so essentially what you need to do just as how i explained in part one and part two of this tutorial series is that well just as how you need to have uh, some requirement such as a level or an achievement for a moderator that would be something like an id and then if you want to make sure that that's like a certain steam id that's also possible but then what you need to do is that you essentially the the concept here is that you would need to fetch that steam id from somebody and then you would basically need to add that to some kind of a data table that exists inside of your game in which you whitelist that ID of that user. So here's a, here's a nice example that uh, we have a user called Freddy who could be an ad admin or a moderator. Uh, and then here you could fill in Freddy's ID. And then essentially what you wanna do is inside of that widget here, so the profile picture panel, then here you could code a specific function that would only populate this moderator or staff profile picture box. And you could also code it so that you would simply only display that box when you are a moderator. But essentially what you want to do here is that you want to populate this box uh, with only widgets that are found inside of the data table that are for staff only. So if you take a look at your profile picture library here, so your data table, then you see all of these different profile pictures. And then what you could do is that what I did to the last three uh, is that you have them have some kind of a parameter that says these are for staff only. So if you have that added that parameter that these are for staff only, the way that you do that is that you add that to your structure over here, uh, then you can make sure that these are only visible for staff. And then what would the code look like? Well, something like this. So first of all, you would have that little scroll box. Uh, and then when you update your widget, so we went over this in the last video, you would make some kind of a function that updates just moderator profile pictures. Essentially, it clears the box, it gets all of the available profile pictures, only adds the moderator profile pictures. So if this is turned on to true, then we add them. And then what we can do is whether or not they are unlocked, which we learned in part two, how to do that. You could put this requirement here that will basically check if you are one of those moderators that is in this whitelisted list. So what this little function here does, it's in my custom function library here, is that essentially it will go through this whitelisted data table of moderators and it will try to fetch uh, these IDs and see if you match this ID. So what we did over here is that, well, we, we got our function from the last video where we load the user profile. And then inside of that user profile, so if I grab that real quick, then we see that user profile now not only has user level and achievements, but also a moderator ID. It could also be of the string type if your moderator ID also contains letters, that's possible, uh, or integer if it's just a number. And then what that little function does for us over here is that it grabs that uh, user profile for us and fetches that moderator ID and then from that uh, data table with the whitelisted moderators, it's simply going to check if that contains that ID, which is yours. And if that whitelist data table contains it, then you are a moderator. So then back to this profile picture panel logic over here, then you would simply say, okay, if I'm a moderator, these are unlocked for me. And that, that's basically how you could do it. So how could you check if you, what your ID is? That is then the question. So how could you make sure that you put the correct ID here to check that? Well, that really depends on what type of subsystem you use. So I myself for our game, we put the game on Steam and and then uh, I use a plugin called Steam Core. There are some people out there that use the plugin called Steam Advanced Session plugin. But inside of Steam Core, for example, if you want to check this based on the Steam user and you want to validate them that way and then whitelist them, so then you could do something like this, that you could do Steam uh, or get user Steam ID. Uh, and then you would get this function over here. And as it says, this would get the unique identifier for a Steam account. So essentially this function over here returns uh, some kind of a parameter here as a string. And this would then return a number. Perhaps it also contains some letters, I don't know. But this is then a Steam ID. So what you would need to do is that for that member that you wanna be a moderator, you wanna make them a moderator. You're gonna have to just make them log in and print this for themselves. And at that point you can then fetch their Steam ID essentially. Uh, 
and once you know that Steam ID that way, you can then add it here to that data table. And then they would be a moderator and would have access to these types of things in your game. And the way that I do it for our own game is that, uh, well, I make people log in with their Steam account in Playfop. And Playfop is, uh, is a Microsoft product. It's essentially a backend for your game. And then what I have in Playfop here is that I have an overview of all the players in our game. And uh, these players, they have an ID. So here you see for this player, for example, you see that this is their ID. So what I could simply do to make this player moderator is copy this ID and then simply add that here to this data table. And of course, with data tables, make sure that your row name is equal to that custom ID here, because the row name is essentially what we use in our logic to find if it exists inside of this data table. So that's how you would approach something like this, guys. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, it's up to what system you use. So for the people that use something like EOS, so Epic Online Services, I'm pretty sure that there would be something in EOS that would allow you to fetch a user's identification in what format that may be, I don't know. But as soon as you can fetch that, you could add that to that list and then you could put all of your logic on top of that so guys that's it for this tutorial video i hope that was clear and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys